Hey everybody, this is Brian with Bear Cards 34. I'm back today with another show and tell video, this time the 1986 Topps football set. Uh, here I have a couple of my graded cards from that time period, uh, Hall of Famer Dan Hampton, as well as Leslie Frazier, who uh, later on became a head coach in the NFL. Unfortunately, this is an open pack of 1985 or 1986 tops. However, uh, I did keep that pack. I purchased it at a card show in Salt Lake a few years back, hoping to pull a Jerry Rice rookie. The best I got out of that was a John Elway, uh, but that was still a nice card to get. Anyway, we'll go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the 1986 top set was a 396 card set. And it's a very unique one for this time period. It has the green border with the white stripes. We also have a pretty busy background. Uh, I like it, but and you can see here you've got like the monsters of the midway. You've got the bear. Um, if they went to the Pro Bowl, it was designated right here. Uh, and it has some uh, stats and information. So that's kind of what you can see from, from that set. Because of the green borders, uh, this is a very sensitive set to try to get in good condition. Uh, I am kind of trying to collect the Bears team set. Uh, it's, you know, I've got quite a ways to go, uh, but hopefully one day I'll have all of those. As you can see on the front of the uh, package here, every uh, pack had a 1,000-yard club with a glossy front on top. Right here I'm highlighting the Roger Craig one because his was especially impressive. As you, if you can see here, up there they have rushing and receiving. Uh, because he was able to get 1,050 yards in rushing, and he also had 1,016 yards receiving on 92 catches. I think that's one of the great performances of a running back all time, and definitely I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, each team also had a team card. This is the Walter Payton one, and right here you see NFL champs. Uh, as a Bears fan, we kind of still live in 1985. So it's the 86 set, but it highlights the 1985 season. So along with these, we also had record breaker cards. Uh, so right here, this is the Eric Dickerson record breaker car, card. Uh, he had uh, the record for most rushing yards in a playoff game, which he still holds to this day. Uh, so that would have been 248 yards in a game against the Cowboys on January 4th, 1986. Uh, Eric Dickerson is one of the great running backs of all time, and his first few seasons were as good as anybody ever had. Another 85 record breaker was Lionel Little Train James, who broke the record for most all-purpose yards in a season of all time at 2,500. Uh, the current record now uh, was in 2011 from Darren Sproles with 2,696 with the Saints, and Lionel James is currently third all-time. Another record was Steve Largent having the most seasons with 50 or more receptions all time. So in 1985, that record was at 8. Uh, that's a record that really, the way the game is played these days, isn't really even something worth mentioning. But it just shows the way the game has changed with the rules that they have now for uh, defensive players and offensive players. Uh, but at the time, that was a very significant achievement. And it's still very impressive, but just not enough that you're going to really, you know, keep track of that the same way. Uh, but Largent, one of the great receivers of all time. Uh, George Martin uh, is number two all time now, but he had the most touchdowns by a defensive lineman in his career. Uh, I think he had seven. Uh, Jason Taylor now holds the record with eight. And then Stephon Page had the record for the most receiving yards of all time in a game with 309 yards that he set in 1985. Uh, that record is now, he's third all time. The record now belongs to this guy. And I think that might even be a picture from the game in which, uh, Willie Flipper Anderson broke the record. Uh, but he had 336 yards for the Rams in a game. And Flipper's son, Drez Anderson, shout out, uh, he, this is his card with the 49ers. But he actually, uh, played for the University of Utah. I'm from Utah and I collect Utah players, so... Anytime I can throw in anything related to the state of Utah, I do so, and that's one right there. But Stephon Page had a, had a great career, and 85 was definitely his best year. Next up, we've got my guy, Walter Payton. Uh, most consecutive games with 100 or more yards rushing. Uh, that, that is now He's now tied for third. Uh, it was seven, but Walter got nine that year. 
Uh, the record now is Barry Sanders back in 97 where he had 14 straight games. And that's a record that may not be uh, beat anytime soon. Um, along with this Walter graded card, Topps came out with a Walter Payton commemorative edition. Uh, really love the shine on that. So uh, that's a nice little variation of that. And then here's a this is a Bryce Petty rookie. Uh, Topps was able to do a uh, right here that back in 2015 they commemorated 60 years of Topps football. Here's a Kurt Warner. Uh, so uh, it's kind of nice when you can find some of the modern cards that are kind of paying tribute to some of the old school cards from back in the day. Now this uh, is not a Topps product as far as I know, but uh, McDonald's also came out with these in 1986. They were the uh, McDonald's uh, scratch and play to win cards. And uh, there, there are some great cards from that set as well. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of make note of those. I don't know if any of you guys were around back then, if you remember collecting those at McDonald's. Now during the 1986 set, they were you know paying tribute to 1985. So just to give you a little heads up on some of the players around at the time, uh, Marcus Allen set a record for the most yards from scrimmage in a season. Uh, and at the time, that was 2,314 yards. So a great year there from Marcus Allen. He was also the MVP of the league. He rushed for almost 1,800 yards with 11 touchdowns and had 555 yards receiving with three more touchdowns. Uh, the coach of the year was... My guy, Mike Didka, Iron Mike. Uh, so, you know, very popular player and coach in Chicago. Uh, the 1985 season, the Bears were able to win that Super Bowl against the Patriots. And uh, Mike Didka was uh, awarded with the Coach of the Year Award. They went 15-1 and in the regular season and then went on to win the Super Bowl. He also won Coach of the Year in 1988. Some other awards of note, Mike Singletary on the left there, he was the Defensive Player of the Year. He was the leader of the 4-6 defense, which was ranked number one, uh, and it's known as one of, if not the greatest defense of all time, part of Buddy Ryan's uh, a group of, of great defensive players there. Eddie Brown won the uh, uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year. He was the 13th pick of the draft in 85, three picks before Jerry Rice. He had a great rookie season with uh, 942 yards and eight touchdowns. He also made a Pro Bowl in 1988 and uh, had over 6,000 yards receiving in his career. And then the defensive rookie of the year was Dwayne Bickett, who uh, had a great career as well. His rookie year, he had 141 tackles with six sacks and an interception. He went to the Pro Bowl a couple of years later in 1987 and finished his career with over 1,000 tackles. The NFL Man of the Year was Dwight Stevenson for his work uh, off the field. Uh, he was a five-time All-Pro and a member of the Hall of Fame. And fellow Hall of Famer Richard Dent was the Super Bowl MVP. He had one and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, and a blocked pass. Uh, so that was just a nice cap to the end of the year you know with as great as the defense for chicago was it was nice to see a defensive player win the mvp that year the 1986 set also features some of the statistical leaders from 1985 uh, here you'll see ken o'brien and joe montana for passing lionel james and roger craig for receiving marcus allen and gerald riggs for rushing and then for scoring leaders we had the kickers gary anderson and kevin butler and for the interception leaders, uh, Everson Walls, another guy I think should be in the Hall of Fame for the NFC, along with a tie with Eugene Daniel and Albert Lewis in the AFC. And uh, uh, that's basically uh, the ones that they highlighted for that year. Now, this set is full of a whole bunch of Hall of Famers, uh, and that would include the three you see right here. And I'll just go ahead and, and throw a few more on here, as I mentioned, just to kind of set the tone for 86, kind of what was happening uh, with like pop culture and things like that from back in the day. The uh, top grossing movies of 1986 included Top Gun, uh, Crocodile Dundee, and The Karate Kid Part II. Uh, I remember seeing the original Karate Kid as a little, little kid, and... Uh, uh, my brother and I walked out of there and we were just trying to do that kick that Daniel does at the end. And I think we spent like two or three weeks trying to do that kick. 
I even joined a karate class, as I think a lot of kids did after uh, seeing that movie. It didn't last very long, though. I stuck with football, but not so much with the karate. Um, I remember if we were late at all, we had to do like a million push-ups, and I wasn't really a fan of that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was kind of a good experience for a short time anyway. Uh, another thing, the TV shows, the most popular ones from 86 included The Cosby Show, Family Ties, and Cheers. And uh, top songs that year, uh, That's What Friends Are For, uh, Say You, Say Me, as well as Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer. Now, while I, while I show the rest of these Hall of Famers here that are a part of this set, I want to give a shout-out to my buddy Mike, who is a great member of the card community, uh, and he's been a viewer of my channel for a while. And I mentioned in a previous video that I upgraded a lot of my cards from the 1980s, thanks to him. He had a... Uh, actually, these two are not Hall of Famers. I'll get to them in a second. <laughs> but uh, I wish they were Hall of Famers. But anyway, he has uh, just boxes and boxes of cards that he kept in his uh, 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 in boxes for years and years now. And uh, I was able to purchase some of those at a very fair price. And part of the reason I had held off on making this video was that a lot of my 86 cards were just in really, really rough shape. And uh, so I appreciate him with the upgrade, which is what motivated me to, to make this video today. Uh, so thanks again for that, Mike. All right, so next up here, as I always do in my uh, show-and-tell videos, I like to give a, a little nod to the players that have ties to the state of Utah. First off, Bruce Hardy. Uh, he uh, played college ball at Arizona State, but he is from Utah originally, played his high school ball here, grew up here. And then Dave Archer of the Falcons. Uh, he started off his career in junior college with uh, Snow College in Ephraim, Utah. And uh, so uh, very happy to see him go on to make it in the NFL. In fact, uh, Dave Archer uh, transferred from Snow College up to Iowa State uh, to finish out his career. This is his rookie card. Uh, he played, I think, six years in the NFL. And he actually was the World Bowl MVP back when we had the World League of American football. And then Eric Hipple there, he was a longtime Detroit Lions quarterback. He went to my alma mater of Utah State. Uh, so definitely love getting some Eric Hipple cards. And he was also highlighted on the Lions team card. Hipple spots his receiver. All right, another one I'll mention here is Denver Broncos great Rulon Jones. Uh, he was also a Utah State alum like myself. And he was a two-time Pro Bowler, and in 1986, he was an All-Pro. Uh, he had quite a great career with the Broncos. And then right here, we've got Utah Ute, Carl Monroe. He was a running back and kick returner for the 49ers. Um, in 1985, uh, the year that that, that car picture was likely taken, uh, the year before it came out, he actually had a 95-yard uh, kickoff return for a touchdown, and uh, the play that he's best known for was in the Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl 19. He had a 33-yard touchdown reception from Joe Montana. Unfortunately, Carl Monroe died back in 1989 after an accidental overdose on Valium. He had been reporting that he was not feeling very well that day and uh, earlier that, that night. And he was rushed to the hospital and, and later passed away. He was actually really good friends with, with Roger Craig and... When Roger heard the news, uh, Roger Craig rushed to the hospital to, to see if it was true, and he was met by Carl's brother who confirmed that. Uh, but just a, yeah, a sad ending uh, to a, a player who did great at the University of Utah um, and had some really nice moments in the NFL as well. Next up, we've got Bart Oates. This is his rookie card. He was an undrafted free agent back in 1983 and went on to be a three-time Super Bowl champion. He was a two-time USFL champion for the Stars and a five-time Pro Bowler. And I think this is a good time as well to mention uh, there are a lot of rookies in this set, and that would include the rookies from the 1985 class as well as players who didn't have a card that was made before 1986. But there were also a bunch of guys like Bart Oates who started off in the USFL. And then because the USFL had folded by this time, a lot of the bigger-named players came over to the league 
And so we, we saw quite a few more rookies this year than, than maybe some of the other years. Uh, in the middle there, we've got Mark Wilson. He went to BYU. So Bart Oates and Mark Wilson and Ty, uh, Todd Christensen are all uh, BYU Cougars from their college days. So Mark Wilson was quite great in college. He won the Sammy Baugh Trophy while he was there. And then uh, right there on the right, you see uh, Todd Christensen. He's another guy that I really feel like maybe should be in the Hall of Fame. He was a four-time All-Pro, a two-time Super Bowl champion, and he was putting up crazy numbers as a tight end. He and Kellen Winslow, uh, you know, those guys were just putting up some crazy numbers before a lot of the other guys did. Next up, we have my favorite BYU Cougar, and that would be Jim McMahon. Uh, this is my favorite card of his that I own. Uh, it's a PSA 9. I love the action shot there, and you know that's the uh, picture from him during the year they won the Super Bowl. So love that card. Next up, we've got the legendary Steve Young. Uh, this is his uh, NFL rookie card uh, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 1986. So he had a 15-year Hall of Fame career. Uh, he's also the great, great, great grandson of Brigham Young, who BYU is named after. Uh, he was born in Salt Lake City, Utah, but he played his high school ball in Connecticut. Uh, at BYU, he was a uh, backup to Jim McMahon, and at one point they even considered switching him over to defensive back because of his athleticism. But after McMahon went on to Chicago... Young really excelled. Um, BYU set an NCAA record with almost 600 yards per game. That was a record at the time. He was a first-team All-American. Uh, he was also second in the Heisman Trophy ballot to another guy that has a rookie card that year. That would be Mike Rozier, who did win the Heisman. Uh, Steve Young then went on to uh, play in the USFL for the LA Express. There was a lot of talk that he might end up being the number one draft pick uh, that year. Uh, but the LA Express drafted him and then c convinced him to play there. Uh, and he did. So that's Steve Young's USFL rookie card. Um, and, you know, you know, he went on to play for the Buccaneers. Uh, they were not great. Bill Walsh ended up doing a trade for Steve Young. Um, he wanted him to be a backup to Montana and potential successor. So they traded a second and fourth round draft pick to get Steve Young. And he went on to the 49ers and just had a, an amazing career. And uh, Bill Walsh said that he really felt like it wasn't that Steve Young didn't have talent. It's that he just didn't have a lot of talent around him. Um, and he really went on to, to excel after that. And just real quick to kind of make note of you know Steve Young's career. Um, he was a 1992 NFL MVP, three-time Super Bowl champ. Uh, one time as a starter, uh, Super Bowl 29 MVP, two-time NFL MVP, three-time first-team All-Pro, three-time second-team All-Pro, seven Pro Bowls, four-time passing touchdown leader, six-time NFL passer rating leader, five-time completion percentage leader. His number eight is retired. He's in the Hall of Fame. Just a great, great player. I'll just mention a few quick Chicago Bears rookie cards from this set. So Dennis McKinnon, who played seven years with the Bears. Jay Hilgenberg, who he's been a finalist for the Hall of Fame but hasn't made it. But uh, four-time All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler, one of the 100 greatest Bears of all time on the list that they made. Um, his dad was an All-American center at Iowa. His un uncle Wally played linebacker for the Vikings. And his brother Joel was a center for the Saints. Uh, and then we got Wilbur Marshall there. Um, who also went on to have quite a great career with the Bears and the Redskins. And next up, we've got Kevin Butler. This is his rookie card. He was a fourth-round pick in 85 from Georgia. He is in the uh, College Football Hall of Fame. In fact, he's the uh, first and only kicker that's been inducted. Uh, he played 11 years with Chicago and then two with the Cardinals. He's the all-time leading scorer for the Bears, passing Walter Payton. Now, uh, Robbie Gould eventually broke that, and I wish we still had Robbie Gould. That would be pretty great. Uh, then we've got William Perry, William the Refrigerator Perry. Uh, now, he's uh, one of my all-time favorite Bears, quite the character, a very popular guy. Now, he was a first-round draft pick uh, in 85. In 84 uh, at Clemson, uh, he was uh, uh, the ACC Player of the Year, 83 All-American, 81 National Champion, um, he scored a touchdown rushing in the Super Bowl. When he was 11 years old, he was 200 pounds, and he said, even when I was little, I was big. Uh, in high school, he weighed 295 pounds as a nose guard, and he ran on the track team, and he was the sixth fastest runner on his team. 
Uh, he even did the running with the running backs, the receivers, and the defensive backs. Uh, Buddy Ryan was not happy when the Bears drafted him. He considered it a waste of a draft pick. But even Buddy Ryan eventually got warmed over by William Perry and uh, uh, even brought William Perry over to the Eagles uh, later in his career. Uh, one thing I'll mention here is pretty cool. One of my viewers mentioned to me in a video a while back uh, about this 1986 Bears Patriots uh, police set. Uh, so this is technically, you know, one of William Perry's rookie cards. I uh, just love that card. Just shows the, you know, the the bigness of the guy. Uh, so anyway, that's a great set to have as well. And happy to have that one in the collect. We've also got this rookie card of Dave Dewerson. Uh, he was a great player at Notre Dame. Started all four years. He was an All-American twice. Third round draft pick of the Bears in 83. And he made four consecutive Pro Bowls. Uh, also, one time had the NFL record for most quarterback sacks in a season by a defensive back with seven. He was the 87 NFL Man of the Year. Unfortunately, he took his life back in February of 2011. Um, they had shown that he had been suffering from CTE. His character is even portrayed in the film uh, Concussion, uh, the film starring Will Smith. He's a character in that. Uh, but just, you know, it, it was a sad ending, but just, you know, a, a great player, really talented. And like I said, he was the man of the year in 1987 for doing a lot of good community work as well. Right here we've got Fred Marion's rookie card. He was a fifth round pick in 1982. Uh, he was an All-American as a senior at Miami and had a 10-year career. Uh, in 85, he made the Pro Bowl, and he's part of the Patriots' All-80s team. But he's perhaps built best known in the hobby world for his pro set belt card which you can see on the right uh, at one time that card was going for quite a pretty penny uh, not quite so much now but it's still one of the most valuable cards of pro set from that year for whatever reason next up roy foster first round pick in 82 12 year career with the dolphins and 49ers made two pro bowls and I mentioned him because he's the only offensive lineman to ever block for Dan Marino, Joe Montana, and Steve Young. So that'd be pretty cool. He also once caught, once caught a touchdown pass by Dan Marino. We've also got Greg Townsend, who uh, was a two-time second-team All-Pro, and he's the Raiders' all-time sack leader with 109 and a half. And on the right there, Dieter Brock. Uh, he only played one year in the NFL. He's a Canadian Football League Hall of Famer, uh, known for his time with the Blue Bombers. Um, but uh, he played that one year in 85. He was a 34-year-old rookie, the oldest in NFL history, uh, and led his team to a division title. Uh, you know, he played the Bears in the NFC Championship game and got roughed up pretty bad, only threw for 66 yards, had a fumble. Um, but he set many team rookie quarterback records, and then in the preseason of 86, he had a knee injury and ended up transitioning into coaching. Next up, we've got Al Toon, who was the 10th pick in 85. Three-time All-Pro, 86 AFC Player of the Year. In 88, he led the league in receptions. Um, he's one of only two players to play less than 110 games and still have over 500 catches. The other one is Hall of Famer Kellen Winslow. Uh, and I will note as well, for those who collect more recently, uh, he's the father of Nick Toon, who was a wide receiver for the Saints. Next up, we've got Vance Johnson. Uh, had a 10-year career, three Super Bowl appearances, and uh, he was part of the, the wide receiver trio, the Three Amigos, who did quite well with John Elway. And then Carl Mecklenburg, who was known as the Albino Rhino. Uh, six Pro Bowls, two times he had four sacks in a game, and he's he was part of the 2001 Broncos Ring of Fame, and he was inducted along with his teammate Dennis uh, Smith, who was a first-round pick in 81, six-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro, always known as one of the hardest hitters in the league, and he's also the Broncos' all-time tackling leader. I also wanted to mention George Adams, who was a first-round pick out of Kentucky in 85. Uh, he was a Super Bowl champ for Super Bowl 21, played seven years, including his last two with the Patriots. But the reason I'm making note of him is he is the dad of... Uh, Seattle Seahawk Jamal Adams. So I didn't know that until I was looking into this, but that's pretty cool. Next up, we have Mark Bavaro, who was nicknamed Rambo, and he really did look like him. Uh, great career at Notre Dame, two-time Super Bowl champ, two-time All-Pro, just a really tough player. And then Leonard Marshall, uh, who played 10 years with the Giants, two Super Bowls, and he's the guy who uh, injured Joe Montana and kind of changed his career. In the NFC Championship game, he did a quarterback sack and he cracked Montana's ribs, broke his hand, 
Montana was out of football for a couple of years after that. Sorry, 49ers fans. But Upper Deck even highlighted that on the card. Uh, that was kind of it. You know, Montana basically played a little bit one game in December, um, a year and a half later. And then he was out uh, out to the Kansas City Chiefs after that. Uh, Sean Landetta, um, you know, he had a great career. Uh, he uh, played for many, many years, three-time All-Pro, two-time Super Bowl champ, two-time USFL champ, part of the 80s and 90s All-Decades team. And he was part of the anniversary teams for the Giants, Eagles, and Rams. And now for the one everybody's been waiting for, obviously Jerry Rice, the greatest receiver of all time, 21-year career, 16th pick out of Mississippi Valley State. He owns almost every major career receiving record, three-time Super Bowl champ, two-time Offensive Player of the Year, Super Bowl 23 MVP, 10-time first-team All-Pro, 13 Pro Bowls. His number 80 is retired. He was just absolutely fantastic. Uh, what I didn't know is he actually retired with the 49ers after playing with the Raiders and the Seahawks. He signed a one-day contract for $1.985.806.49 million. Uh, and that was 1985, the year he was drafted. 80, his number, 6. Uh, he retired in 06, and then 49 for 49ers. So it's very sentimental and very well thought out retirement. Uh, but just a great, great player. Just a legend. And definitely the most valuable and sought after card of the set. Michael Carter was a three time All Pro, a three time Super Bowl champ, and he won a silver medal in shot put at the 84 Olympics, and then they went on to win the Super Bowl. So he's the first person to win an Olympic medal and a Super Bowl ring in the same season. Uh, Gary Clark, another player, he was one of the players from uh, USFL that switched over. Uh, he was a two-time Super Bowl champ, three-time All-Pro, just a great receiver. And then Charles Mann, uh, who started in 83, he's a three-time Super Bowl champ, four-time Pro Bowl champ. Uh, 85 was his best season with 14 and a half sacks. And he's been known as a really good guy since retirement in the community, just a great person. The Browns had quite a few rookie cards that year. Bernie Kosar, who had won a national championship with Miami. There was some draft controversy, but he ended up on the, the Browns. Uh, took him to the playoffs his rookie year. Made a couple Pro Bowls. Went to a couple AFC championship games. And then you've got Kevin Mack, uh, Mack Truck, and then Ernest Spiner. Those two both ran for 1,000 yards in the 1985 season, uh, which is one of, the only, one of only a few times that that's happened where you've had Two running backs do that at the same time. And then the little guy, Frank Minifield, also a rookie card that year. Great player. Lomas Brown, rookie card right there. Sixth pick in 85. Uh, he was a great player. Uh, he was a seven-time Pro Bowler. One thing that kind of put him on uh, in my doghouse was he mentioned in an interview once that he purposely avoided blocking Green Bay Packer lineman. Uh, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I think it was Sean Jones. Anyway, he admitted to purposely avoiding blocking him so that Scott Mitchell would get hurt to take Scott Mitchell out of the game. And uh, Scott Mitchell ended up breaking his finger on that play and missing some time. Uh, I just, you know, as a lineman myself, just, you know, and I admit I'm biased because Scott Mitchell went to Utah, but uh, I just think that's a crappy thing to do. Now, he did come out later and apologize um, and said it's one play out of the 18,000 that I regret. But Scott Mitchell came out and was just like, man, I had Lomas over to my house. You know, I knew this guy. You know, that's very disappointing. And I can imagine so. I mentioned Reggie White, the Minister of Defense, in a previous video, my brother's all-time favorite player. But this is his NFL rookie card, and he was just a, a great, great player. Uh, one of the greatest of all time, second career sack leader of all time, Boomer Esiason rookie, and Steve Jordan who went to five Pro Bowls, and then his son, Cameron Jordan, has been to six. So great thing in the family there. And then two of the great players, Bruce Smith, the all-time sack leader, and Andre Reid. I know it's a little quick at the end there, but that's all the time my camera allows for. But those are two great Hall of Famers as well. Thanks, everybody, for watching.